Hold up. Hey guys, it is Tristan with Nerdette's Newsstand, and I want to talk a little bit about an interesting video I saw the other day from Comics by Perch. Now, I mentioned this on my community post, but I wanted to kind of expand upon it. Because of the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial, I have been able to kind of step back and look at comics and the drama around it, or nerd culture in general, from more of a consumer standpoint than necessarily a reviewer standpoint in the last couple of weeks because it was, you know, eight hours a day live, right? So I was unable to post as many comic breakdowns or reviews or news, and it kind of made me appreciate the art form again. But then again, look at it from the standpoint of why am I being told specifically what to hate and what to like and what to love and what to consume? And at this point, it feels very one sided. But I will admit that there is a little bit when you look at comics and media. So Newsarama, Bleeding Cool. Well, not even Bleeding Cool. They give a lot of negativity. But um, there is some positivity surrounding it but most of what you see when it comes to comic books or nerd media nowadays is really really negative and I think a lot of it comes from obviously the hate bait and hate rage channels which I've talked about plenty of times on this channel and address this issue but being told what you can like and what you cannot like is absolutely ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. There are plenty of stories out there that I champion every single month and get shit for it every single month. I just posted something the other day from the Pride Anthology, and oh my God, I had to delete so many disgusting comments because they were just that. They were disgusting. And I wasn't going to have that make anyone feel uncomfortable at my platform. So why are we told in the long run what to like and what to hate? And if you do like something, it seems like there's this narrative going around of your, you're you're just, you know, you're just told to consume and that's it and that's it and that's it. And you do it and you consume it. No, that's not how it works. There can be nuance in these conversations. And unfortunately, that's kind of lost upon the internet, right? It really is. But as far as these books... We see books like Son of Kal-El all the time, all the time demonized. I think my channel and maybe Comic Breakdown are the only one covering them in a decent light. And Comic Breakdown has his criticism also. But I don't see anybody else really covering this book and giving it fair critique or critique besides, oh, John's bisexual now and he has a boyfriend. Like, would you be saying the same thing? If it was John and Kathy, or would you be saying the same thing if it was John and Saturn Girl? I don't know. It just kind of makes you think. But I like the book, and I'm not going to stop consuming it because bigger channels do not like it because they are likely unreading it. You see a lot of this, um, and I talked about this one specific incident, so it was very clear that it wasn't actually being read because they were trying to say the villain of the book was fake news, which is completely false. <laughs> Absolutely 100% objectively false. The The villain is Henry Bendix, but that's, I, I digress. We also seen this kind of over the last few days when it comes to Obi-Wan, right? It came out with record numbers, a lot of really great reviews, a lot of mediocre reviews. And then of course, once you see these type of channels, pick up on it the reviews go downhill right you're seeing this even with miss marvel miss marvel was out for less than a minute and it was already being review bombed i just my mind is blown at how predictable the internet um culture warriors so to speak have become it was so predictable People watched it happen in real time. We've seen this done time and time and time again. It's not just Miss Marvel. It's Hawkeye. It's The Last of Us Part 2. Last of Us Part 2 was happening so quickly, it was unlikely people had even purchased or actually been able to play part of the game. How can you give an objective review three minutes after the game's in your hand? And it's become so rinse and repeat. It's so rinse and repeat to the point where it's like, why even report on it? 
why even give this toxicity any light? And I think it's, you know, free content. You know, basically people are going, oh, yay, shocker. They did it again. If you if your whole channel at this point is dedicated to hate. What are you doing with your life, buddy? What are you doing? I think the reason why I wanted to specifically talk about this is because there is some great titles out there that people are not talking about because, of course, they'll get feet. They'll get, you know, kind of hit with the hate mongers. So one of them I want to talk about was Green Lantern. Another good one. It just wrapped up. Um, Catwoman by Teeny Howard is one of my favorite ongoings right now. I love the Nico Leone art. I love that it is in large part feels like knowing its target audience is a female demographic. And I fucking love that. The coloring, everything is beautiful about that book. Another really good book that's getting the weirdest amount of hate, which is actually kind of shocking, is um, White Knight or Beyond the White Knight, right? By Sean Gordon Murphy. Like two years ago, everybody was like, yeah, he's our champion. He's our champion. And now it's like, oh, he made Terry Asian and maybe sort of not really shipped Harley and Bruce. So now I don't like this book. I just, I can't take this shit seriously. Multiversity came out this week. Another good book that people are like, oh my God, they gender swapped stuff on a gender swapped earth. Yeah, no shit. It's a gender swapped earth. It, it's existed for a while. You, you're more than welcome to go ask Grant Morrison because he created said earth. And yeah, yeah. Um, DC Comics in general, right? There's a big barrage at kind of hating DC Comics in general, which is weird to me because there's a lot of really good, successful books coming out. And you have this spewing of the numbers. And I shared a really great breakdown of the numbers the other day. And you have this spewing to fit the narrative. Oh, my God. Guess what? Vita Ayala's Wonder Woman is only selling 30K units. Yeah, that's not bad. That's typical for Wonder Woman. But I digress because that is, you know, the nuance that's lost in the conversation of everything is dying. And at some point you have to kind of look in the mirror and go, if you don't like it, then don't consume it. If you bought it and you don't like it, respect. Tell me why. But don't come to my channel and say, I don't like this because it was gay. <laughs> like with the John Kent stuff. Um, it's it specifically in my community post. I should have screenshotted a lot of them, but... I just didn't have the time for it. At some point with my channel, I've gotten to the point where I'm like, yeah, you're just wrong. I don't have the time for this kind of uh, petty games. I'm not in your culture war. I am here because I like comics. If you want to enjoy comics and enjoy a good community, this is the best place to be. But if you're here because you want to hear me hate things, you're at the wrong channel. You absolutely are. And honestly, I can't wait to dive back into some of this stuff. Another great book I want to mention that came out this week. So fucking good. I'm going to review it. It is so good. G. Willow Wilson's Poison Ivy. Holy crap. I absolutely was blown away at how good this book was. But you probably won't hear that very often. So I'm going to do it. <laughs> no matter what, I'm going to try to do it. So anyways, yes, make sure you guys subscribe because I will have a Poison Ivy review up sometime this weekend and maybe we'll do disagreements or something on Sunday. But yes, if you enjoy something, just enjoy it. It's that easy. Don't let other people make up your mind. It is that easy. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>